Hello everyone. In today's class, we go on with what we said last. The one is that the ultrasonic wave is obliquely incident on the single flat interference, and the second is that the ultrasonic wave is vertically incident on the single curved interface. For the convenience of discussion. Some basic terms are defined at first. One, refraction. Refraction refers to the phenomenon that ultrasonic waves enter the second medium from the first medium and change the direction of propagation. Two, reflection. Reflection refers to the phenomenon of changing or not changing the direction of propagation in the same medium. Let's start to learn the first content. The law of the oblique incidence of ultrasonic waves to a single plane surface, as shown. It is divided into six cases. In the first to third cases, the incident waves are all longitudinal waves. In the fourth to sixth cases, the incident waves are all shear waves. The interfaces are solid and solid and solid and liquid and solid and gas, respectively. It should be noted. That since shear waves cannot propagate in liquids and gases, when all the second medium in the figure is liquid or gas, there are only longitudinal waves in the second medium. Then take the first cases as an example to analyze some laws of ultrasonic oblique incidence on a single flat interface, as shown in the picture. The angle between the incident wave and the interface normal is called the incident angle alpha. The angle between the reflected wave and the interface normal is called the reflection angle gamma, and the angle between the refracted wave and the interface normal is called the refraction angle. Beta, and the indices L and S represent longitudinal waves and transverse waves, respectively. Previous physical knowledge tells us that Snell's law is satisfied between the propagation speed of ultrasonic waves and its corresponding angles. That is. In the above formula, the subscripts one and two are represented in the first and second medium, respectively. From Snell's law, one when the incident wave is a longitudinal wave, and the longitudinal wave velocity c l two in the second medium is greater than the longitudinal wave. Velocity c l one in the first medium. It is obvious that the longitudinal wave's refraction angle, beta l two in the second medium, is also greater than that in the first medium. Longitudinal wave's incident angle alpha l one. At this time, the longitudinal wave incident angle alpha l one in the first medium is increased, and the longitudinal wave refraction angle beta l two in the second medium is also increased. When beta l two increases to ninety degree, the corresponding alpha l one is called the first critical angle, denoted. As alpha is equal to arc sine, open parenthesis, c subscript l one slash capital C subscript l two close parenthesis. 
At this time, there are only shear waves in the second medium, which is the design basis of the shear wave oblique probe as the picture shows. 2. When the incident wave is a longitudinal wave, and the shear wave with velocity CS2 in the second medium is greater than the longitudinal wave velocity CL1 in the first medium. It is obvious that the shear wave refraction angle beta S2 in the second medium is also always greater than the longitudinal wave incident angle alpha L1 in the first medium. At this time, when alpha L1 is increased, beta S2 also increases. When beta S2 increases to 90 degree, the shear wave is transformed into the surface wave, and the corresponding alpha L1 is called the second critical angle, denoted as alpha I I is equal to arc sine open parenthesis capital C capital L one slash capital C capital S two close parenthesis. At this time, there is no ultrasonic wave in the second medium. Only the surface wave exists on the surface of the workpiece which is the design basis of the sound wave oblique probe. It can be seen that the appearance of the shear wave oblique probe and the surface wave oblique probe are the same. The difference is that the incidence angle of the longitudinal wave emitted by the internal chip is different. What we have learned before is the flat interface. How about the condition if the ultrasonic wave is incident on the curved interface? For the convenience of discussion, a unified rule is made at first. We observe the shape of the second median along the propagation in direction of the ultrasonic wave. If the interface is convex, such as interface is called a convex interface. On the contrary, it is a concave interface, as shown in the figure. Figure 1 shows a concave interface, and figure 2 shows a convex interface. When analyzing the reflection and the refraction of ultrasonic waves on curved surfaces, we can use the idea of differentiation in mathematics. That is, a small section of the ultrasonic wave incident on the interface is regarded as a plane, and the normal and tangent planes of the small section of the plane are made. As shown in the picture, in this way, we can use the theory just explained when the ultrasonic waves are incident on the flat interface to analyze the law of the curves interface. It is easy to analyze that the reflected wave on the concave interface of the plane cosine wave will focus, and the reflected wave on the convex interface will diverge but its reverse in extension will also focus. Obviously, if the interface is spherical, the focus is the point, which is called the focal point. The distance from the focal point or focal axis to the center of the sound beam and the intersection 
of the cuff surface is called the focal, focal length F. Obviously, when the ultrasonic waves are focused, the sound intensity is the focused area increases and the detection sensitivity increases. Conversely, when the ultrasonic waves are diffused, the sound intensity in the divergent region is weakened and the detection sensitivity is lowered. For example, Ultrasonic testing of a hollow cylindrical workpiece. When the probe detects from the outer cylindrical surface because the ultrasonic waves diverge on the convex interface, the ultrasonic signal received by the probe is weak and the echo height on the instrument display screen is low. On the contrary, when detecting from the inner cylindrical surface, because the ultrasonic waves are focused on the concave interface, the ultrasonic signal received by the probe is strong and the echo height on the instrument display screen is high. The refraction of the plane cosine wave on the curved interface is slightly more complicated than the reflection. Whether it is focused or divergent is related to the propagation speed of the ultrasonic waves in the two media, as shown in the figure. However, the analyze method is the same as the previous analysis of reflected waves and it also obeys Snell's law, which will not be repeated here. It can be seen from the figure that when C1 is smaller than C2, the reflected waves are focused on the concave interface and diverged on the convex interface. When C1 is greater than C2, the refracted waves focused on the convex interface and diverge on the concave interface. Through the analysis just now, we can design a focusing probe to improve the detection sensitivity, as the picture shows. Obviously, it provides us with another way to improve the detection sensitivity in addition to increasing the ultrasonic frequency. Next, please think about whether the echo height of a spherical pores is higher or lower than that of planar solid defects when ultrasonic waves are detected. Should we consider this? 1. Based on previous studies, we know that the ultrasonic wave is almost totally reflected at the interface of solid and gas, so the echo height tends to increase. 2. However, today we know that the spherical pores are convex interfaces, and the refracted waves will diverge, resulting in a tendency to decrease the echo height. What is the final result which trend should be considered stronger? In short, in the actual ultrasonic testing, we should analyze specific problems take comprehensive consideration and take practical measures, it is impossible to generalize. Well, that's all for today. Through today's learning, in addition to today's knowledge, I hope that you must learn to make use of the previous and subsequent knowledge to make comprehensive analyze. For example, I just gave you an example of detecting stomata. Especially in the future operation exercises, 
we must think more and find the theoretical basis from the operation requirements. Thanks for your watching.